Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Wild Wonders of Southern Africa. Now in this episode, I'm doing a book review on an exciting book that's going to hit your shelves soon. It is a book about the animals of Kruger National Park by Keith Barnes. Have a listen to this. Right guys, here's my review of Keith Barnes's book, Animals of the Kruger National Park. Now a little bit about Keith. Keith is born in South Africa. He's a tour leader and co-founder of Tropical Birds. He travels the world and has vast knowledge of everything wild and wonderful. And not only is he an ex exceptional photographer, but also a bird nerd like myself. And he holds a PhD from the Percy Fitzpatrick Institute in African Ornithology and the University of Cape Town. Now I think that every tourist visiting the park would benefit from this layout of the book as it is not too difficult to navigate around to find the animals you expect to see. Now as I browse through this book now this is a digital book that uh, Keith sent me and uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that I don't have a hard copy in my hands making it easier for me to review the book but I'm so super excited that I have it and I can really dig into it at my own leisure and take it with me digitally doesn't matter where I am I don't have to carry the book with me so it's it's a good thing now just going through the content here um, he, he speaks about the region everything around and about Kruger National Park the aim of his book how to use the book and then the glossary of terms. Now that's very important if you want to know what he's talking about if he's using um, names that are not that commonly used around animals. Then there's also the Kruger's importance for biodiversity. Then I, that's one of my highlights but I'll talk about my highlights a little bit later in this review and also the season and timing of your visit. Also a very good section he has there. Considerations of your visit an excellent point there because not a lot of tourists visiting our national parks know what to do. They don't read that little bit of information beforehand on their, in, uh, on their little information booklet that they, they have when they visit the parks. And I feel it's extremely important that they know what to do, not just in dangerous situations, but how to act like tourists. A lot of people just scatter their papers and uh, bottles and things out of the window not really caring about the natural environment that they find themselves in and I feel it's important that we need to talk about those situations. Um, then there's also the the habitats, very important. Characteristic plants, I mean that's one of your key features when you go and f uh, look for mammals or animals. If you know what they eat, you know where to find them. Then there's also the map showing the distributions of habitats in Kruger National Park, map of Kruger National Park in adjacent private concession areas, um, how, where and when to watch animals in Kruger National Park, and the 10 best wildlife watching routes. Now I'll, I'll talk a little bit mo uh, more about that a little later on, but just look at all of these mammals. Have a look at that. Loads and loads of mammals, and then there's also reptiles and amphibians. Now Kruger National Park is a must for all tourists visiting the park with around one and a half million visitors annually. Now after reading uh, Keith's book about the animals of Kruger, I realized that this informative field guide is a must in my arsenal of te textbooks. I take it with me when I uh, do guided safaris in the park or at least I will because now I've got this digital version and as soon as I can get my hands on a hard copy, it's definitely going to be in my arsenal. I can guarantee you that. Not only do Keith cover 57 mammals in this book, he also covers 8 amphibians and 17 reptiles. Um, now that is exactly what you want in a book. Not just to cover the mammals and call it an animal book, but also talk about the reptiles and amphibians. I feel he could have mentioned at least 10 or 20 bird species but then I realized the book would become a really big uh, behemoth of a book to carry around and it's not a, a, a textbook or a, a, a little book that you can have around easily. It's going to become too big. Uh, the book covers all of the basics that you expect from a great guidebook but what sets it aside from the other books is the great information on the animal behavior their family structure and all the extra biological facts and maps to complement the user's experience. 
What I love about this book is that the photos aren't blocked in like your traditional uh, textbooks and things that you get. There's a little frame around every photo but rather it flows into the page almost as if every photo was taken just for that moment or that opportunity. And I love that. I love that. I'm going to show that to you as I quickly browse through this. I don't want to give you all of the details and information just yet, but just go through it now. There you can see the aim of the book and look at these beautiful photos as it flows into the page. It tells you how to use the book, all of the key identif uh, fi uh, identification features, the glossary of terms, as I said, very important. Kruger's importance of biodiversity, the seasons and timing of the visit, but just, it's an amazing book. It's really a, a must-have. And we can see the characteristics of plants. And even a little bit of a zoom in. You can see that there. Get the tree there. Large fruited bushwillow. And there you can see the seeds. Beautiful. And this is what I was talking about. This year. It's part of my um, highlights of the book. Uh, just to talk to you about the highlights a little bit. On page 8, in the section on the aim of this book, he emphasizes the fact that there is more to a safari than just the big five. And I just love that. I wish more people would get that perception of getting the big five as a must out of their heads and also focus on the little things in nature. Now he also focuses on, uh, or he emphasizes on that on page 24. So it's not just said in one little part of the book, but it flows throughout the whole book that you get that idea that yes, the big five is a nice and exciting thing to see, but there's a lot more. And I think that's why more and more tour guides are focusing on like things like the, the, the little five, the ugly five, the five most amazing birds you see. There's a lot more on a safari to experience than just the big five. Now, on page 14, the ecological importance of Kruger. That is also a really big highlight. And I think everyone would agree that if we cannot make people aware of the ecological importance of this amazing park that we have, then I think it's going to lose its value very, very soon. Then here on page 22, this is my third highlight of the book, the distribution of habitats in Kruger National Park. If you understand this illustration, then the search for animals will be just that much easier. Know the type of plants, then you can easily find the animals that will eat those type of plants. It's as simple as that. Okay, and then you can see how, where and when to watch animals in the Kruger National Park. Very, very important. I just hope and wish um, more guys will publish these type of books in the future that will tell you, like here on page 25, to go on the night draft, to go with the, the guides that are there, that are qualified, educated, to help enhance that experience for you. Will make my job extremely, <laughs> um, well, more enhanced as well, if people want to do it. And you can see here more use of the sighting sports at camp, make a plan, if in doubt, follow the river. It's all true. But the only negative comment I can have about the whole book is, these 10 best wildlife uh, watching routes on page 28 as I scroll down to it. Um, this will become a problem or it might become a problem in future as this book becomes more and more popular as it will become. And most if not all tourists will follow these routes. But the save here is the upside is that he gives more than enough options, 10 routes to be exact, and they are huge. So I'm sure it will not have an impact on the tourist numbers to these areas. But um, obviously with one and a half million visitors annually to the park, it might, it might. So that's, that's the only negative thing I think that can come from a book like this. But we have to remember that this is the animal book. So all of these are extra benefits that you're getting into this book. So I just think it's a plus point. It's not a negative as much. You can see now the mammals start and as you can see here, there's also a great illustration of mammal footprints. And it gives you the size, all, all of the, the references are in metric form. So it's, it's really, really nice that it's easily to convert if you need to convert it. But uh, 
it's great. It's a really, really well thought out book. So I do commend you, Keith. It's, it's really great. I just want to scroll down a little bit more. Sorry, my computer is a bit slow, so it's going to give me a distorted view. But it continues all the way. I don't want to give all of his information away for free here, so I'm just going to touch on a few things. But here we go. It's it's on the, the animals, and you can see in the top right hand side of the page here, one of the big five. That's really nice tells the, the tourists as well which one is part of the big five. Not a lot of people know that and I think it's important that they do know. And he can tell you the, the common name, the Latin name, the size, the weight, the key identification features, habitats, habits, diet, and then a lot of interesting facts following that. And it's not just a one page spread. You can see it covers one, two, three, four pages of interesting information about just the lion and it does that with most of your um, more intricate animals that everyone wants to go and see like leopard you can see here also four page uh, layout cheetah four page layout interesting information there about the king cheetah as well and the genetics behind it and now sticking with the theme of the cats you can see serval and caracal and I love that Serval just looking right at you popping out of the the photo there. It's amazing really great for photo uh, photographic work here African wildcats and now you go over to your civets genets It just flows. It's so nice and now hyena all of the interesting information about hyenas That's a four page layout as well, and then your art wolf and What I love about this book is as you continue it gives you information about the more secretive animals as well, just like this white-tailed mongoose. And something I did not know before, what I know now, the striped polecat, depicted here on page 68, it's also known as a zorilla. Never heard that before. So I've learned a whole lot just from paging through this book. So Keith, I do commend you. And if you guys are interested, uh, I will give you the information at the end of this video on how to get hold or get your own copy. It's the Animals of Kruger National Park, The Wild Guys by Keith Barnes. It was uh, printed by Princeton University Press in September 2016. So it's a very new book. That's why I don't have the hard copy yet and um, I'm hoping to get my hands on it soon. It's 176 pages, 5.8 by uh, 0.5 by 8.2 inches. It's, there's two different ISBN numbers. I will give that to you at the end. And you can expect to pay anything from $90-95 to around about $28. So it's also available on iBook format and also on Kindle. So I'm just going to quickly page through all of this so you guys can get an idea. Now bear in mind the middle part of what you're looking at is obviously the middle part of the book as it opens up. So it's not all on one page, it pages through quite beautifully. And I must say, these photographs are just spectacular. Look at that. And he does not discriminate against other animals that's not part of the big five. I don't know if you just saw the giraffe also had a four page layout. Uh, Eland, you can see that's got two pages. Kudu, two pages. Then even the little antelope, your Sharps, Kreisbok and your Common Daker, Stienbok, Klipsprunger, they all have their own page dedicated just for them. The Reedbuck, which is a very, very rare antelope to get in Kruger, gets a two-page layout. Bushbuck, same thing, two-page layout. And that's a really nice camp visitor in Kruger Park. There's the Bushbuck. Another not-so-common one is the Nyala. Roan antelope unbelievably difficult to get also gets a two-page layout same as with sable water bucks an easy one to get but uh, I love this impala two-page layout and then the tetsubi there right now I'm gonna go all the way try and see if I can get to the other section now we've got our mammals just want to skip a few pages on here we can see there's some reptiles and same thing, everyone has got its own section. 
and I love this. It's got the key identification features, habitats, um, habits, diet, and it tells you if it's venomous, non-venomous, and what to look out for. It's a lovely book. As I'm going to skip now to the end of the, the book, into amphibians. And we are getting into the frogging season, by the way. So if you guys are interested in doing some frogging, the rainy season, it's the end of November, is a really, really good time to start looking out for some frogs, toads. So I love this fact that he has included some of them here. This is one of my favorite, Bushveld rain frog. It's Google the sound this frog makes. It's unbelievably funny. It's so cool. And obviously, with the rhino poaching problem that we have in Southern Africa, and in fact in the whole world, there's a section on page 172 about the rhinos on the edge. And then the index in the back. Right, and that's my review of the Animals of Kruger National Park from the Wild Guide by Keith Barnes. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Now I hope you guys enjoyed the review and I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to get your hands on this exciting book. Now it will be available hopefully in some of your most well-known stores but if not have a look in the description below and you can get your copy right there. Uh, for those guys that don't know I just gone over 800 subscribers. Thank you so so much for that. And for the rest of you guys, following is the spotted answer of my previous spotted photo. Here we go. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your week. Goodbye.